writing effective notes in lectures, supervisions and other teaching environments is a useful skill to have. But what about after the session is over? What next? In this video we will give you some techniques for managing your notes and getting them to keep working hard for you throughout your studies. It is likely that a lot of the information that you are learning as part of your degree is new or at least at a level that you haven't worked at yet. With all of those new and sometimes complicated concepts flying around in your brain, having a technique to bring them all together in a neat summary would be useful, right? Cornell Notes is one approach that can be very helpful in getting a handle on things. You can use this technique in many different ways as it is very flexible. Just Google Cornell Notes and you'll find lots of downloadable templates for you to use for free. Essentially, Cornell Notes works like this. You'll have three boxes making up a standard sheet of A4 paper. We've had to squash it a bit for this video. On the left hand side, you'll have a space for those questions or points of curiosity that you might have come up with throughout your note taking. Did something not make sense? Do you need to go away and read up on something in more detail? You can put these sorts of things here. In the main right hand section, you have a space for more detailed notes. Then at the very bottom, you have a summary box where you can summarize your key ideas or thoughts into two to three sentences. Once you've completed one of these Cornell note sheets, you can put it at the front of your lecture notes to act as a cover sheet to remind you what was covered when you come back to them later on. If you prefer a more visual approach, my maps and spider diagrams can be used to combine visual and verbal information. They're more useful to do after a class as opposed to during it, and they're helpful for collecting summaries and key ideas across multiple lectures. One question, however, to ask yourself, will you keep it up? They can be quite time consuming, so make sure you pick an approach that is sustainable and easy to do. Spider diagrams are similar to mind maps, but are a bit more structured around a core idea or concept, while mind maps are a collection of ideas and facts presented in a non-hierarchical way. And then we have the humble highlighter pen, or its digital variant. Highlighting can be effective, but only if used strategically. Walls of colour are not going to help. Everything might seem important, but as with note-taking itself, highlighting or capturing everything isn't going to be useful to you later on. Strategically highlighting keywords using a coding system can mean you're thinking more deeply about the words themselves and also comparing them with others. If you do use a coding system, be sure to keep it consistent. So maybe try creating a mini key so you know what colours correspond to what things when you're looking over your notes later on. No matter what approach you take for making lecture notes, make sure you keep them safe and where possible, back them up. These notes will be critical for when you come to revise for exams or write essays. After all that hard work of structuring and colour coding your newfound knowledge, make sure you do yourself justice and store them safely. You can do this by backing them up to the cloud or simply taking photos of your notes and storing them online somewhere safe.